Hi friends, good morning. Welcome to Bible. This is a new week and this week we're talking about pleasing God and specifically the story that we're going to be talking about is Saul's conversion. Uh, you'll find out later throughout the week that Jesus changed Saul's name and it might be today actually when I started that. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself but that's okay. You'll find out and you'll learn that uh, God changed Saul's name to Paul during this time of his conversion because he became a new person. The conversion is like when you're converted into something new, okay? The old is gone, but the, you're, you're, you're just a new person, a new outlook on life, a new belief, and your life is different than it was before. And that's exactly what happens in the story today. And I'm going to talk to you really quick about an example of that. Last week in our um, reading groups, some of us were reading a book on Christopher Columbus. You remember? Was that your reading group? Yes. And a lot of the people in that time thought that the earth was like this desk, flat. Now, the reason that these people and these people, well, to be honest, a lot of people didn't know whether it was or wasn't, but they believed what people said just because they kind of just went with the flow. They just kind of followed the crowd People would say yes, and then they'd say, oh, okay, well, whatever, sure, it is flat. And so they kind of just agree. And then they realized later, well, I'll tell you in just a second, but they came to believe this because if you, have you guys ever looked at a ship, like being on our, on one of our beaches or any beach, have you guys ever looked in the distance at a ship or a boat that's sailing away and it keeps getting further and further away and then what happens? It just disappears, right? Well, people thought because they saw it kind of go, the horizon line is straight, right? When you look out onto the horizon, everything is straight. So people believed that because they would see the ship go straight, 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 that it would just go and fall off of the edge of the earth, meaning everything was flat. And then just where, when it got to the edge, boom, it would just drop. Well, later after Christopher Columbus sailed, he learned and he discovered the new world and all of these discoveries happened and it was an age of discovery. People were discovering new things. Well, we started learning that the earth wasn't flat like this desk. The earth is actually round, right? Now, it was easier for people to kind of go with the flow and say, yeah, sure, it's flat because they didn't go out and do their own discoveries. They didn't go out and, and test the theory to see if it was correct or incorrect. They just kind of believed, oh, okay, well, these people believe that it's flat. So, okay, it's just easier to go with the flow, right? Now listen, even though the flat earth idea was believed by a lot of people for a very long time, it still was untrue. That's the key word, it was untrue, all right? When people learned and accepted the truth about the earth's shape, they started to change their belief. Now today, the story that we're gonna talk about with Saul's conversion is very similar to that. He had a certain belief and he lived by that. He stood his ground and he stood by that to a very, very um, difficult, I guess, extent, okay? He did things that he regretted later, but because of his belief. Beliefs are strong, friends. They will make us do or not do certain things in our life, all right? That's where our conviction comes in. But we have to be sure that what we're believing is actual and real truth. Because how silly to believe something just because someone else said it and we don't test it or know if it's true or not and we're just kind of doing things and we don't even know if it's true. Kind of silly, right? All right, I'm gonna to read to you today about Saul's conversion. I'm gonna hold our Bible card up and this story comes out of the book of Acts in the Bible. Acts chapter nine, verses one through 20. All right, I'm gonna read really loud for you. As the Holy Spirit empowered believers to preach, teach, and perform miracles in the name of Jesus, thousands of people came to know the Lord as their Savior. Followers of Jesus went to other countries and told those people about Jesus. This made the enemies of the church more worried and angrier than ever. Many of these enemies were leaders in the temple. They had ordered Peter and John not to preach about Jesus. They had even killed Stephen because he told people about Jesus and performed miracles in Jesus' name. One of the people who watched Stephen being stoned to death was a man named Saul. He did not stone Stephen, but he did have a part in the event. 
After Stephen's death, Saul continued to harm followers of Jesus and even put them to death. One day, Saul received written permission from the high priest in Jerusalem to track down Jesus' followers in the city of Damascus. Saul began his journey toward Damascus. All of a sudden, a light shined around him from heaven. Saul fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you fighting against me? Saul asked, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are fighting against. It is not a good thing for you to continue fighting against me. This amazed Saul. He asked the Lord, what do you want me to do? Jesus told him to get up, go into the city and wait. Once there, Saul would be told what to do. The men who were traveling with Saul stood speechless. Sorry, I lost my place here. They could hear Jesus, but they couldn't see anyone. When Saul stood up, he couldn't see, even though his eyes were open. So the men led Saul to Damascus. As Saul spent his time there praying, the Lord told him that a man named Ananias would come to him and place his hands on Saul so that he could see again. Ananias was a believer in Jesus who lived in Damascus. The Lord told Ananias to give Saul a message. This frightened Ananias since he knew that Saul had done so much harm to followers of Jesus. The Lord explained to Ananias that he had chosen Saul to tell Jews and people who were not Jews about Jesus. Paul would even tell kings about Jesus too. He also explained to Ananias that Saul would suffer much as a follower of Jesus. Ananias obeyed and went to Saul. Ananias placed his hands on Saul and said, the Lord Jesus appeared to you on the road to Damascus and you are a believer in him now. He sent me here to you so that you could see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see. Then Saul got up and he was baptized. After this, Saul became a mighty servant of the Lord. He no longer went by the name Saul. Instead, he was called Paul. Paul preached God's word and taught large numbers of people about the Lord Jesus. The Lord worked miracles through Paul. Later, Paul was led by the Holy Spirit to write many letters that became part of the New Testament. Wow, friends, what a story about someone's strong beliefs in something, and then they change their mind and they completely convert after knowing and learning the truth. All right, just like those people long ago who thought the earth was flat and then they change their mind. It's really easy for us to believe something that can be untrue just because other people are believing it. But just like Saul, this is an example, a true story of an example of sometimes when we follow the crowd or sometimes if we're doing just what other people are doing when we don't test or prove that something, a belief is real or true, we can fall into like, I guess a trap, right? Of believing something that might not be true. We must check for truth, check for what's really true. What do we really believe about the Bible, about God? It's so important, friends. I want to remind you guys that in this time, in this day and age, after Jesus was crucified, after Jesus rose again and he was gone from this earth, he was still alive, but he just wasn't on earth um, preaching and healing and performing miracles the way he was. And a lot of people didn't like that there was um, a group of followers. The disciples were still on this mission to um, witness for Jesus, which you know that witnessing means, and just in case you don't, it means sharing the gospel, right? Telling people about the story of Jesus, what happened, how he died. These people didn't like it and they wanted to put an end to it. And that's what Saul was trying to do in the beginning of the story. He believed that this was wrong. He wanted nothing to do with it until God appeared to him. Jesus' voice appeared to him and told him, don't fight against me. It's not a good idea. Why are you doing this? At that moment, he thought, whoa, I better stop and think about my actions, my beliefs, what I'm doing, and why I'm doing it. 
right? These people didn't want to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And the reality is these were the religious leaders of this time. These were the people that were in the churches teaching and they, they were teaching against Jesus and the Messiah just because they thought in their mind, they had a different picture of what the Messiah was going to look like. Okay. And they didn't like being reminded that not only were they wrong, but they also had a really big part in why Jesus was crucified why Jesus was killed and put on trial for no reason. They didn't like that reminder. I kind of think of it as sometimes when somebody tells you the truth about yourself or something that you did, we don't like to hear it, right? Just the same reason why we don't really like to, like when we have to apologize and we have to say, oh, this is what I did wrong. We don't really like to say it. I know I don't like to admit stuff like that. It's hard. It's hard, friends. But the truth is the truth. No matter how we want to view things, the truth is the truth. And there's no denying truth. And that's what Jesus is. That's what he comes to tell us. And that's what his story is. It is pure truth, friends. And it's powerful enough to convert someone like Saul, who was hurting and killing Christians at this time because of his beliefs. It was, it was true enough and powerful enough to convert him and to change his belief completely. All right. You're going to go ahead and finish and complete page 125. It's a really cool um, page that has a heart on it, and you're going to get to color with black and red. All right, friends, let me pray for you really quick, and I hope you have a blessed day today. Remember to be a kid and have fun, okay? All right, bow your heads really quick. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much, Lord, that we can rely on your truth and that Jesus is truth. Thank you, Lord, that we have the Bible and that we have the story of Jesus to know the truth. I just thank you um, for these Bible stories that we get to share and learn from and remember and just learn from Lord, how we can apply that to our life today and what we can take from these stories and how we can use them in our life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for all you've done for us and the many blessings you give us. Be with my class and their families. Help everybody to stay safe. In your name we pray, amen. All right, friends, I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day and we'll talk later, okay?